Shabbat Shalom. We are only some days um, from the Jewish New Year. And Monday night, the new Jewish year begins. And we'll be celebrating here on Monday night. It starts at eight, uh, 6.30 p.m. And will be translated, uh, passed to the internet. So feel free to join us. Um, we've been talking about this festivity several times. So I've been speaking about this festivity uh, year after year for 26, 27 years now. Every year as it comes up on the calendar. Because years run in cycles like this, it comes up year by year. And this feast is related to some things for Jews. One of these things is the shofar. You need to hear that. And usually at Rosh Hashanah, it's related um, with a return to the Lord. And we'll most likely be speaking about that when we celebrate Rosh Hashanah. And on that day, we wish a good and sweet new year to each other. And it's also the day where we start special 10 days of trembling in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur when we pray and do this return. So from the beginning of Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. And uh, on this day, three books are opened, the Book of Life, the Book of Death, and a temporary book. This is what our um, forefathers have said. And in the Book of Life, the really good ones are mentioned. In the book of death or not life, um, the punished ones or the not good ones are mentioned. And the third book, which is in between those two, it mentions those that are not really good, but neither really bad nor really bad. And it says that most of us are in this middle book. Because on one hand, we are not all that bad, but not really good. And this um, return to God um, is especially for people like us. So that as we come back and ask for forgiveness, as we return to him, that we will be written into the book of life. I remind you that in Jewish tradition, the book of life is not the book of eternal life. It's the book for a good life 
in the coming year. So it's sort of like that COVID shouldn't touch you. That you stay healthy and everything will work well for you. And the book of punishment or death is not the book of eternal punishment or, yeah. It's just a book where if your name is in there, you shouldn't count on the goodness of God. And some people may say this is superstitious. But the Torah actually says It's related to God offering to us blessing or curse, and we decide. So if we keep his commandments, we will get the blessing. And if you break his commandments, then there's punishment. But in between those two, the blessing and the curse, there is return. Because this turning around and turning back to God and His ways, this return, this turning around, enables us to come from the position where we should get a punishment back into His blessing. And the the authors of the Bible, beginning with Daniel, they uh, use this book of life and of punishment uh, in order to show that this is not only for the coming year, but that it can continue on into eternity. For example, in Daniel 12, it says that at the resurrection of the dead, those who are written in the book of life will go into eternal life. And we see this in the New Testament um, in Revelation as well. Oh, so this is also why some people um, mix up these two books. They get them confused, the Book of Life for the New Year with the Book of Life for Eternity. But now that we know we have a Mashiach with Yeshua and that he died for our sin, now that we know he rose again from the dead, And he went up to heaven and sent us his Holy Spirit. Now that we know he is going to come back and reign. We read and we know that our names are written in the eternal book of life. Yeshua took our sin on himself our sins in the past, those in the present, and even those in the future. And by His grace, by the grace of God, our names are not only written in this book, but in heaven. If you went to a synagogue,
es auf den Plätzen so Namensschilder von den Menschen gibt. Manchmal, manchmal. Oftentimes there are um, name tags on persons, on people's seats because, yeah, maybe they bought it sometimes. And in the heavenly synagogue, thanks to Yeshua, our names are written there. And there's even a better illustration. You come someplace, and because of the COVID regulations, like we have it here, where you should um, sign up before coming. So you come and they look for your name in the list, on the list. And if your name is on there, you can come in. So in the heavenly list, we are already um, on that list. We have been placed there and um, they are waiting for us already. And all those uh, funny videos and pictures that uh, believers send to one another, oh, it says, 3G, which is something of the COVID rules here, that you should be, um, he's trying to explain that in Russian. <laughs> so it means that you need to be vaccinated or tested or uh, healed of, of COVID so that you had it. This is one of the rules for many places to get in right now in Germany. That was the Russian explanation for that. And that is the same for us in heaven. Yeshua doesn't give us just the heavenly things, but he um, gives us something for our life now. He took our sin and our sickness on himself, and that's also speaking about this life now. And the life with Yeshua already now is sweeter than life without him. Not only, but that's where we're going. And maybe we need to pass certain tests. But we can feel his, him at work in our lives already now. And now, if we are with Yeshua, thanks to Yeshua, who is the way to God, who is the true Torah, We get into the godly way. We return to God. We get complete forgiveness once and for all. We get a new life and eternal life. We get the help of God and we receive his um, protection. All of that is what we have in him. And if we sin, we feel that we're doing something wrong because the Holy Spirit tells us. And so we return and we ask for forgiveness. And He forgives. And thinking about this, I remember a question I've once been asked. It was in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. 
Why should we be praying so hard? Why should it be so hard? Why should our um, return be so hard since we already are with him? Why should we be asking uh, for forgiveness so much so hard um, if we have already been forgiven just like this? And I've been giving always the same answer when asked something like this. I usually say, it's not only about you. Also, if I see that you are the most important person, and I understand that you are the most important person to yourself, that's okay, that's normal. But still, it's not only about you. Because speaking about return in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, um, it is about the whole people. We don't say as much I as we say us. It's not me and I, but it's us us and everything is in the plural form of the first person it speaks about us so if I speak I see myself as a part of us And if you speak, you see yourself as a part of us and we share responsibility for one another, a spiritual responsibility, um, a physical and um, emotional responsibility. And at the time of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, this responsibility comes to a climax. Because we don't just do something together, we return to God together. We are going to return together. We don't point at each other and say, oh, he's bad. I'm not as bad as he is because I'm righteous. We say, we. And we ask for forgiveness for sins that we maybe haven't ever committed. And we don't say, I sinned, but we say, we have sinned. And uh, we regret it and say it's sad. And from the beginning of the history of Israel, we see that great people have um, done this. Um, they stepped in for the whole people. We don't just pray for ourselves so that, may I, that I may have a good life. But we ask for forgiveness for all of us so that all of us may have a good new year, so that all of us may have life. Our forefather Abraham had a lot of good moments with God. When God spoke to him, Abraham heard his voice and he had communion with him. And, and there was one moment when he ate with God. And back at that time, 
as also in the New Testament and today. So this is the highest point in the Torah also with um, the, the peace offering, eating together with one another and with God. So God um, encountered Abraham and Abraham saw three men. And he ate with them. He offered them something to eat. And after this, he hears what should happen to Sodom and Gomorrah. And he starts trying to convince the Most High that he wouldn't destroy these cities because of the small number of righteous people. And the Most High says, if there are ten righteous people, I will have mercy on them. Think about that. We spoke about that already. The first thing is that um, um, these disgusting cities and what would happen to them, even though they were full of sin, and it mattered to Abraham. It was not like he didn't care. Second thing, think about this rule of the ten righteous ones. If there had been ten righteous ones, those cities would still exist. Um, even though all those things were going on and this little number of righteous ones would bear the responsibility for the whole people. The blessing or the curse of the people of Israel depends on me and on you. Not only on the politics in Israel. And not on how intelligent some Jews may be. And not on the way our people keeps the Torah and the commandments and protects it. It depends on me and you. That's why Apostle Paul also writes the little remainder um, of the Jewish people in this time keeps the whole Jewish people from destruction. So think about your role. If you are a German, the destiny of the German people is in your hands. It depends on your life and your faith. Um, the destiny of the German people depends on you. If you are Ukrainian, the same counts for you and your people, or if you're Russian, that's the same for you. If you are Polish, it's the same thing for your people. No matter what nation you stem from, in here or online, our um, people, our nation, whatever nation you come from, 
the destiny of this people um, depends on you. And that counts for the city as well as the family. Look at other examples of the Bible. Um, the great Moses, Moshe, our teacher, he also stepped in for his people. He took turns in wanting to um, get rid of his um, calling <laughs> because it was too hard. And then again, asking the Lord and pleading before him to um, be merciful on his people. And this way, the people got into the promised land. Partly because of Amos's prayers. And uh, the prophet Daniel prayed in a similar way. He um, admitted the sin of Israel and said, us. While he was righteous, he stepped in for the people that wasn't righteous. And that's uh, in place so deeply into the soul and uh, the world view of the people of Israel. that it couldn't find any um, way of expression in the universal salvation. Yeshua took sin, our sin, upon himself. Um, as it is written, the righteous one for the unrighteous ones. He stepped in for the people. He took the sin on himself. And he took his responsibility. Or he understood his responsibility as well. And this understanding of responsibility of the single one for the whole nation or the whole people, that was in um, the basis of our salvation in that which we got through Yeshua. And the Apostle Paul Apostle Paul said that he would even give away his salvation in Yeshua if that would help the Jewish people. Let's turn to First Timothy, Chapter Two, verses one through six. First Timothy two one through six. Ибо един Бог, 
Единый посредник между Богом и людьми. Человек Ишуа Мессия. Предавший себя для искупления всех. Таково было в свое время свидетельство. First of all, then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all the testimony given at the proper time. Pay attention to what's, what it says. The prayer for all people. And prayers and petitions and um, praying for others and thanksgiving. Um, the most, um, the worst people for the believers back then, the most disagreeable people, who was it back then? There were some of a high position in the Jewish spiritual elite, the government, the Roman one. Because um, the main problems and persecution came from that side. So this says, in some way, you should also pray for those who bring you problems. And people nowadays may be um, not agreeing with things that are decided in politics. But if you're always only angry and you don't pray for politicians, you don't fulfill the law of Yeshua, his command. Because our well-being also depends on how we pray for the government and the politicians. And it's a good right of people in this country to go um, on demonstrations. But if we go there, it's very important not to forget to pray beforehand while you're doing this and afterwards. Especially if you're a person who calls himself a believer. And whether you go to a demonstration or not, whether you are happy and content with what's happening or not, and uh, whether you worry about the upcoming elections or not, And independent of your political meaning or worldview, independent on whom you're going to vote for or whether you're going to vote at all, don't forget to pray for those who are um, in the politics. Pray and uh, plead for them ask and um, don't forget thanksgiving don't forget to be thankful for the government you have because as it says here that's what your 
upcoming year depends on will it be quiet, peaceful, sweet, good? Don't forget to pray and to thank. Because the destiny of the people depends on you. So if you go into return, take the people with you as well. And from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, it's not I return to God and you go wherever you may. And it's also not, I return to God and you can join me if you want. It's more a, I go to God and I'm uh, dragging the whole people with me. I go back to God and I'm leading them back to God as well. Because maybe I am the remnant who gives life to the people. Maybe it's you. Maybe you are the remnant um, of faith and love and um, grace and mercy of God. And maybe we are the ones um, thanks to whom this country will be blessed and thanks to whom the nation of Israel will be blessed. I don't only want to have a sweet year for myself. I want the whole nation to have this. And we just read it. God wants all people to be saved and to uh, see the truth. So on Monday night, be ready to take the burden of the whole people on yourself and carry it to God, to Yeshua, because He has done it and He still does it. And you won't carry it alone. It's the yoke or the burden of Yeshua. And He knows how to help you and to support you in doing so. We'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. First Corinthians 7. Verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified through her believing husband. For otherwise your children are unclean, but now they are holy. And verse 16 as well. For how do you know a wife whether you will save your husband or how do you know a husband whether you'll save your wife? Some of us live under such circumstances. Um, their partner may be unbelieving or he left faith. Maybe the children are not believers or parents or other relatives. So some of us are the only believers in the whole family or the, the bigger, larger family. And we cannot forget our role and our meaning. A 
a believing wife can sanctify her husband who is not believing and the other way around. We can in this way bring salvation closer. So we bear responsibility for our families, for our partners, for our children, for our parents, for our nephews, and for our, um, yeah, all the relatives, the in-laws, for the whole larger family. And as Rosh Hashanah will start, be ready to take this, to take them and to carry all of them towards God. Your children, your partner, your parents, and the parents of your spouse. Yeah. all your relatives no matter what kind of relationship you're in with them maybe some of them are like Sodom and Gomorrah to you maybe you can't even allow yourself to treat them in a good way but still you take them and you carry them to God because Yeshua did so because that's his burden and as we enter into this time of return that's not only for me it is for us We want to have a good and sweet year, but not only each and every one for himself alone. It's not about you. It's about all of us. It's not about me alone, but it's about my whole people. It's about my city. It's about my uh, region and my family we go to God and if you don't want then I'll carry you I'll drag you because Yeshua did so he carried me or dragged me so I'll do the same for you Thanks to Yeshua. Amen.